segment four, what does he mean by that continued? <clears throat> the truce. Last summer, you told Andy Ferguson, doing a profile for you for the Weekly Standard, quote, the next president would have to call a truce on the so-called social issues, close quote. Now let me read to you a couple of sentences from Bill McGurn, Wall Street Journal columnist, friend. Quote, the aggression on social issues today emanates mostly from the left, whose preferred vehicle is a willing judge inflicting his private social preferences on the law. Anyone who believes a Republican call for a truce will end this is living in a dreamland. A far better way to unite Republicans and independents and Tea Partiers would be to talk about returning these hot button issues to where they belong the states and the localities acting through the people's elected governors and legislators. Close quote. You got Bill McGurn angry, that's for sure. Well, he may be right. I don't want to argue with anybody about this. You know, one of the ironies is um, you look at what I've said, and in, in, in my case, done. Um, I'm in complete agreement with most of those who. Were well, let's talk about that. You've had a pro-life record. Yeah, and unlike a lot of people, I've just talked about it. We have actually passed legislation to, in essence, make it more informed. The, the choice that the law currently requires more informed in Indiana. Um, abortion clinics were not regulated till I ordered it uh, in Indiana. And so uh, we've taken uh, those steps. You don't, have, don't take it from me. You can check with the right. Uh, right to Life organizations. They've never had, they will tell you, uh, a governor so pro-life. Um, so it's not that I disagree at all about with, with these folks, and I don't want to have an argument about it. Bill may well be right. Um, it was simply a, a tactical suggestion that goes back to the premise we discussed earlier. If you, if you don't believe that the American Republic is mortally threatened, as I do, by this one overriding problem we have built for ourselves, then of course I'm wrong. And, uh, uh, but if that is the case, then all I was really saying was, I don't want to lose one person. You, were ta you keep talking about yeah. how hard it's going to be, and it is, to make the kind of changes that will restore America's greatness. And uh, all I was saying was, we're going to need to unify all kinds of people. And we're going to need, freedom is going to need every friend it can get if we're going to do these things. And so, that's, you know, but look, the folks who have taken exception. Uh, they're uh, your friend. They're your, they're. And I'm, and I'm theirs, and I respect them, and. Uh, All right, I, so let me, let me ask one more question on this truce idea. Because this, again, is everybody, this is everywhere. So let's give you a chance just to address it. The next president, whoever that might be, is very likely to face a, an appointment, a, a vacancy on the Supreme Court. Now, if that next president were following your advice, wouldn't make a bit of difference. Has nothing to do with that. There well, is, in other words, does a truce mean that you you let Cass Sunstein and Larry Tribe give you the, uh, I mean, or no, you choose somebody from the Federal Society? What what the heck does a truce mean? Well, in if case? I'm the one who used the word, am I entitled to decide what I was talking sure about? Sure, you are. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, first of all, it was addressed to both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. McGurn was quite right. I've said the same thing many times. The most the aggression right now comes from those who are trying to, you know, change. Uh, uh, our social uh, arrangements uh, by judicially or somewhere uh, from the other side. But um, this has nothing to do with one of the deepest uh, convictions that I have is about strict construction of constitutions. It goes to the heart of our rule of law. I've only had three shots to appoint judges in Indiana. Um, we have one of those systems in which I am sent a panel and I have appointees to the panel so they know what I'm looking for. And fortunately, I've always had the opportunity so far. I've selected three of the most rock-ribbed, unimpeachably strict constructionist judges Indiana has seen. That's, abs that's a non-negotiable uh, item uh, with me. And I hope, you know, that next president, whoever that may be, right. will have that same viewpoint. Defense. Two quotations. One, you at CPAC, quote, nothing not even our national defense can get a free pass. We are, constantly we are currently borrowing the entire defense budget from foreign investors. That is not, as our military friends say, quote, a robust strategy, close quote. Item two, this is almost a dirty trick because I know you, you and I feel the same way about him. Quotation two, Ronald Reagan, mm -hmm. quote, defense is not a budget issue. You spend what you need. Well, if you have it. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, if you have it. Uh, I said in the very same speech, I've served in two administrations that practiced peace, the policy of peace through strength. It is, I think, inarguable historically that it worked. Right. And it was the appropriate policy, and it always will be. But um, we have not been in this bind before. You know, we have not been as broke as we are or are about to be. And it is absolutely inevitable if we do not tackle the uh, deficit and debt problems, defense will get strangled anyway. I said we'll have, if we don't get on top of this, we'll have a lot less strength and eventually we may not have peace. All right. Um, fighting war in Afghanistan, much of the Middle East aflame, China expanding its military dramatically. Let me quote to you Hillsdale political scientist and Ricochet contributor Paul Ray. Uh, our fiscal crisis is not the only particular we must address. The Chinese are behaving like bullies. I also believe we're witness witnessing a strategic shift in the Mediterranean. The younger generation is turning to the only cultural force that has purchase in the post-Cold War world. They are turning to Islam. Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, Jordan, Bahrain, these states are likely to become more hostile to us. What does Mitch Daniels know about any of this? We have no indication. Close quote. Yeah. Well, um, I'm not uh, utterly new or naive to these things. The work of Hudson Institute was all about national security. And as OMB director, didn't you? You had all a seat on that, the National Security Council. Yes, yes, in fact. And Senator Luger, in the years I worked for him, um, uh, was on the Foreign Relations Committee. So, um, so that's I don't want to overclaim, but it's not as though I've not paid attention. You know. As, as a lot of folks do, Peter, you left out of your, the introduction the 15 most important years of my life, my years in business, which included going all over the world uh, on behalf of, uh, of one company, uh, actually two, and um, uh, you know, seeing a lot of things uh, uh, in, in a way that you may not get uh, sitting on a college campus, uh, you know, reading uh, people's journal, reading uh, learned journals. So um, I'm not going to have a credentials argument here, but I'll, I will just say this, that, that once again, if we are not, if we do not restore the vitality of the American economy, if we do not in the process get on top of our debt so that we are not the beggars of the world, um, you know, the professor there, he won't have an answer either as to what you do about the Mediterranean or the Chinese. Chinese won't have to threaten us militarily. It's called the, it was called the bonds.